Welcome to Space Time with Dave. I am Dave. I am going to show you how I process an HDR composite astrophotography image. So this is kind of a composite of composites in order to get um, a nice exposure of the Orion Nebula where you have a very bright core, much brighter than the rest of the faint details. This is my final image uh, that's been merged and processed and uh, a little bit of coma correction. So this is the uh, the final image, but all this tutorial is going to focus on uh, focus on is the HDR processing portion. So I'm going to close this. So what I've done is I have three images here. When you shoot this, you're going to shoot three different exposures. Um, I went with six seconds, fifty seconds, and three hundred seconds. So these three images are my already pre calibrated and aligned and stacked uh, image of images of each exposure length. So each one of these is already a composite image. Um, but they're the three different uh, exposure levels, I guess you can say. And if I if I kill the auto stretch on them, then you can really see the difference um, in the six second one. This, this really gives me the whole core and um, you can see at fit, even at 50 seconds the core is already blown out here. So, but you need three um, in order for this to work. Um, and you know, depending on if you're shooting a different object, uh, you may need different exposure times. Um, in my somewhat limited experience, the Orion Nebula is really the only uh, deep sky object where you need to do this. Um, if you don't want to blow details out, that is. So you can. Uh, I'm just going to restretch these now. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to um, register these three images relative to each other. So we need to do star alignment. And so we go process, image registration, star alignment. And um, so I'm going to align them all relative to my 300 second. This is kind of my master. And the other two are just kind of filling in the details. So my reference image, I'll leave that set to view, and then select my 300 second. Okay. Then I'll add the other views, six seconds, 50 seconds. Okay. And then you just hit the circle and let it do its thing. And okay, it is done. So now I have two new images. And um, if you're wondering why two and not three, it's because we aligned uh, these two, the six second and the 50 second, to the 300 second image. So um, we didn't, we don't need a, another one of those. So um, it doesn't look like much has changed, but when I stretch them, uh, you'll notice that it has shifted. See how the, the border is here? So it shifted the whole thing over so that this will line up properly with and I can just do that I can just drag this on top and see that and if I click and hold it goes transparent and so I can see through that it's it's a nice match now if I do it with the old one you'll see why that was necessary and so obviously I can't merge those two because they're not aligned so um, so we don't need that and we don't need that one anymore we just need these three so now we have to uh, we have to save these images. Control Shift S to save as. And so I made separate directories for um, my different exposure lengths just to, uh, that's how I stay organized. And the file type I'm going to save as, uh, I'm going to make sure I use in um, the XISF. This is the sort of the newer Pixinsight format, I guess. And I'll just save the highest possible quality. And once that's done, then I can close. Control Shift S and 50 seconds save. Okay. And it saves. There we go. And I'll just leave this my 300 second image open for the time being. So now what I want to do is uh, they're aligned, and I need to do my HDR merger. So do process. Uh, HDR composition. 
Okay, and you can see I had done that before. Uh, add files. Um, there's my 300 second image, and then uh, my 50 second image. Add files. Six second. Boom. There's all three. Just leave everything at default. Hit the circle button and get yourself another beer because this is going to take a while. All right, and we are done. Close that. And so this is my HDR image and it shows you in its default linear state. So now if I auto stretch it, oh, and the core still looks blown out. Well, what's going on there? Well, that's okay. We have to do some extra trickery to bring it out. Um, but the point is that data is there because if I kill the auto stretch, um, we can see the core there. Um, so um, what we do, I'm going to close all these. And at this point, um, I'm going to proceed to process the image as I normally would uh, with an extra step of HDR composition in there. So let me just uh, quickly kind of show you how I do that. First of all, I'm going to fast rotate that bitch um, to make it easier to see and work on. And I'm going to crop it down. Geometry, dynamic crop, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's just crop that stacking artifacts out of there. Okay, and so I'm gonna just throw a real quick background neutralization on there. Color calibration, background neutralization. And just so you can see this a little better. Neutralize, right. Okay, so that looks very pretty. So um, I'm going to uh, sh show you. So now I would normally do, um, and I'll put a link to my normal uh, DSLR workflow. Um, and I would normally go through those steps now of background neutralization and denoising and, uh, and all that stuff. Um, but I'm just going to skip, 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 skip ahead and just do... Uh, so I can show you how to do that to get the core out. So I need the screen transfer function and the histogram transformation. And I'm just going to stretch this so it's nonlinear. And there we go. Okay. So now I want to bring the core out. And so at this point I would have normally done deconvolution and sharpening and lots of other stuff. Um, so... Uh, what I'm going to do is the use the HDR multi-scale transform tool. And this is a pretty handy dandy tool. Now I don't want to use the whole image. I want to make previews because it'll go quicker. This tool takes a, a little bit of time. And the only the core is the only area that I really care about uh, for this process anyways. Um, but I'm going to have to do some trial and error. You're going to fine tune the number of layers. Uh, all the other settings I leave default. It's just the number of layers that uh, that I care about. So what I'm going to do is uh, make a bunch of previews here. I can just drag this along because I want to kind of compare. You know, I want to see what six is going to look like, and I want to see what seven is going to look like, and I want to be able to kind of just jump back and forth between them. So um, I'll go preview one. I'll just leave alone, and then preview. 011, I guess. Uh, I'll, we'll do six. We'll leave it at the default and see what that does. Okay, there's six. All right, so that's what that is. Now let's do seven. Okay, now we will do eight. And Okay, so now let's let's compare. So that's default. Core's totally blown out. That is with that was with six layers. Now this reveals all the detail, and it looks nice. There's you know there's, um, I mean it's, you can see everything there is to see in there. But I don't like it. I think it gives a really, ooh, an overprocessed look. Um, you know the Orion Nebula should look kind of like this. 
this region is much brighter and it should look brighter than everything else. So uh, I, I kind of look for a balance. And so if you can see, if I go down to the next preview, this was with seven layers. And here I get a bit better, right? If I go from, that was six layers, that's seven layers. And, but I think for this image, I like uh, the setting of eight layers the best. And this is really, you know, just comes down to personal preference. I, I tend to prefer uh, under processing. I would rather error on the side of less processing than too much. And to me, that looks like too much. So I like this. Maybe I'm losing a little bit of detail. I mean, you can see here, there's like lots of dark dust, you know, there's dark dust in there. And, and here you kind of don't see it as much. But I think in the overall image, this is going to look the best. And so that is the setting I'm going to use. Okay, there we go. It is finished, or at least the HDR uh, composition portion of the image is finished. And so you can see I have a nice core there with lots of good detail. Um, I want to kill all these previews don't need them anymore. Um, so there, so there's a lot more steps and I skipped many steps to making a, 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 you know, to making a very good image. But the point of this tutorial was just to show you how to do the HDR um, process. If you want to see um, the whole workflow in detail, check my other videos. I definitely have one for that. And here's, uh, we'll just go back to the, uh, my finished and my finished image. You can see what I got there. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any ideas or you know maybe the, the HDR process can be a little bit simpler because um, that's quite a bit of work. You have to you have to align and stack three separate images and then come back to it and uh, and then then do the HDR merger and then you still have to process the image. So there's a lot to do, um, but you can see the results and um, I'm quite pleased with it. Um, getting the core right on the Orion Nebula is kind of, you know, one of the notoriously tricky things to do in astrophotography, and I'm pretty pleased with the way that came out. Um, so, um, all right, so if you have any uh, suggestions, advice, or questions, let me know. Uh, do me a favor and uh, throw me a thumbs up, click subscribe, or send some beer to my house if you liked this tutorial. Thanks.